So I'll probably wrap up this AWS Terraform series in a couple more videos. What we want to focus on right now is we need to actually get a database deployed out. I'm going to choose to use DynamoDB in this example just because I think it's easier than spinning up an RDS instance and it's cheaper too, right? So I'm going to go and just make another file called database and then we want to spin up a Dynamo table. So let's go over here and say create a Dynamo DB table with a PK and SK. Name the PK, PK, name the SK, SK. They are both strings. I know my head's hiding this. Let me hide this for two seconds. Additionally, I need the Lambda to have access to read slash write to this table. Set up necessary IAM permissions for the Lambda to do this. All right, so let's just let this create some initial Terraform code. It shouldn't be too much code, I don't think. All right, so let's look at this code real quick. We have a table resource that's been set up and we're gonna name it main table. Now I would keep billing mode pay per request. I think it's just easier. It just kind of auto scales for you and you're just gonna get charged for it. Or you can actually do like a provision concurrency mo model where you can actually specify your read count units and your write count units for your table and your uh, global secondary indexes and stuff like that. If you have consistent traffic, you might save some money in the long run. If you do that approach, you kind of have to plug this stuff into your billing calculator and figure out what's going to work best for your project. Now, when you're creating a Dynamo table, you typically have to provide what's your hash key and what's your range key. And you have to set these attributes over here so that the DynamoDB table knows how to distribute your data across its you know, infrastructure under the hood. If you don't know how Dynamo works, basically everything you store in the Dynamo has to at least have a hash key. And Dynamo uses that hash key to distribute your data to make it very fast to read and write your updates um, to your different partitions. Okay, down here we have the policy that we're setting up for the Lambda function. So we're allowing the Lambda to get an item, put an item, update, delete, query, scan. So all the CRUD methods, honestly scan, I probably wouldn't even allow. Um, using scan is just a sign that you're not doing something correctly. So I'm just gonna get rid of scan to make it more secure, make sure that our developers are writing proper code. Doing a scan over a Dynamo table with millions of records is just going to destroy your bill. All right, and then we have the Lambda set up, and then we need to attach this policy to the Lambda role. Now, I will say that I don't think this is properly hooked up. Typically, with this being white, it's a sign that like this is not properly provisioned. So I'm going to go ahead and say, be sure to double check permissions with the Lambdas defined in this API file. So it'll probably end up like refactoring this a little bit to use the proper role. All right, so now it's refactoring this to actually use my Lambda function module. So it's going to attach this policy to this module and we should have access to read and write the Dynamo at this point. All right, so now we wanna update the API to actually read and write from Dynamo. So I'm gonna actually change these endpoints. I'll say API nodes, and that could be a get request to get all the nodes in our system. And then we'll do a put request if you wanna update these. So instead of these endpoints returning hello world, what I want to do is I want to refactor this to use the AWS v3 SDK to bring in a DynamoDB client so that my git and put requests can store a record into a PK of nodes, SK of nodes. So as you can see, this brought in two libraries. We have the AWS SDK client DynamoDB and then also the lib DynamoDB. So let's go over here. This is the first library that we need to make sure we install. So I'm gonna click on the install over here and then I will just run it right here. Uh, let's make sure we do it from the API directory. I'm gonna run this one. And then we're also going to bring in the lib DynamoDB. I will say that if you're not familiar with AWS SDK, there's version three, which everything is kind of broken out into its own uh, NPM package. And so if you're like installing a global AWS SDK, you're probably using version two, which uh, I would not recommend using. I think it's deprecated. So assuming this is correct, this will set up a DynamoDB document client, which is like a helper that wraps the DynamoDB client. And then down here we have a table name, which we're gonna have to probably get from a Terraform output and pass it in if you want this to be more accurate. We're gonna assume that we have like a const table name is gonna come from DynamoDB table name. And then we can use that over here. And then we could probably use it over here. Okay, so now we're gonna to try to grab this environment variable. So let's make sure that in the API TF, we should be able to say environment 
and then we should be able to specify this right here. And then we want to grab the table name that we've created in Dynamo. So, and then we can go over here and we can say DynamoDB table name. We could say this dot main table dot uh, name. Here we go. So that's how we can grab the name from that Terraform resource over here and then use it in the environment variable that's going to be passed to the Lambda function. And so when this thing is running, it should have access to this thing. Um, and it's not a build variable, it's a runtime variable. So we don't need to update this or anything because we're not like using it when we build up our application. And yeah, let's just kind of read through the DynamoDB code real quick. So when I do a get request to this API nodes, it's going to do a get request for nodes, nodes. Okay, so it's just basically getting one record from DynamoDB. And then that should do the request. So you have to do a dot client dot send with your command, and then you get a response back and you can send back the item to the actual user over here. We're doing a put request. So again, we're going to take the request body that was specified and, and try to store a record with the PK and SK of nodes. And then you send the command that'll actually store it in the Dynamo. And then we return a message to the user. All right, this looks good. Let's do an NPM run deploy and see if this is able to deploy everything out successfully. Okay, so it's creating the Dynamo table. If I go back to AWS and just search for DynamoDB, we should see our table being created now. Go to tables, and then we have main table here. Okay, let's go explore items, and we should see that we don't have any items right now. Um, so what we could potentially do is I'm going to create one, and I'm going to call it nodes, nodes, and then we could add one more attribute over here. We're going to call this a map, and sometimes it's easier to actually just do the JSON format. So let's go to JSON format, and I'm going to switch it to JSON view so it's easier. We're going to store an object called nodes here, and we're just going to go back to our UI. And I think I have like a bunch of hard coded nodes. By the way, Terraform looks like it ran successfully, which is good. So I'm gonna grab all of this data that we already have. So it has nodes and it has connections. Go over here, copy that, and then we just want to attack that on to this. So you can actually, you can just store like whatever normal JSON that you could in Dynamo, which is pretty cool. So let's put nodes, put connections, and then we should be able to save this. Uh, looks like there's a little syntax error. I probably have a comma somewhere I shouldn't. Let's go to that comma. Go over here in for nodes. Make sure this is good. Okay, let's go to that comma. Let's create the item. Okay, so that's going to store the item in Dynamo. And then later on, we can like view it with all the connections and nodes. All right, there we go. I had to do it in a new um, Cognito window. I think I have some caching going on. But you can see that all the data that we just stored in Dynamo manually, that is being returned here. All right, so we have the DynamoDB table deployed. We have the API we can hit to get these nodes. I wanted to refactor this code a little bit. So right now this is all hard coded and I want to instead have this be pulled in from a REST API. So again, let's just use cursor to help us out here. I'm gonna say, please refactor this to pull in the nodes by hitting a, uh, I'll say API dot postname.com slash API slash nodes. So peeking at the changes, it looks like it removed the hard coded data structure and it has a fetch node structure, which again, this is probably um, wrong. I need to say like this and then probably also say like const location equals window dot location host name. Okay, we'll put that there, we'll do some back ticks there. I guess if there's an error, it's just gonna make it set to nodes and no connections. Okay, this looks good. So then down here, we can see that it's using this. I wanna make sure we're create nodes as being, where's this being invoked? That's being called from initialize scene. Yeah, let's just try this out. I'm gonna go ahead and accept it. And then we could probably just try to get this thing deployed out. Um, so that'll rebuild the image and get it deployed to our API. And then we can verify if this is working. A fetch request. Okay, it's trying to do a fetch request. You see it on here, it's doing a fetch request to nodes. Zoom in a little bit. Do API thumbnailcritique.com.com slash nodes. So there's a double dot com I gotta fix. So let's find where we're doing a dot com. I think that's a nodes.com. I could just get rid of this. And then we should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and just deploy it one more time. And now it's actually making a request to get API slash nodes. Looks like we get back. Do we get back a response? But we are getting back, I think, a cores issue. Right here, we're getting back a cores issue. 
So I think in our Express app, we probably need to go and allow our domain. I think we can just install a course. And then we can just go ahead and say cons cores is equal to require cores. We should be able to say app.use cores, and that'll just basically give us star access. And then we can deploy this again. Okay, that's been deployed out. Okay, this one actually did not fail. So if you go over here, it looks like we got back a response. We got back all of our connections in our nodes, which is pretty nice. But I think the issue is that the application is trying to load this data, even though the data is not like ready yet. So we'll have to do a little bit of debugging there. Um, so I refactored the code a little bit to make it wait for all the nodes to be fully loaded before it like runs its random update camera logic and stuff. There is a little bug where like I don't have a locally running API right now. So technically I could get this to just hit my deployed environment. So we can have at least some way to test locally against a deployed environment. Eventually I would like to come through here and actually allow this thing to run locally. You can't run this locally very easily right now because A, it's depending on DynamoDB. And so like we'd want to run DynamoDB locally so that it's faster when we're doing local development. We're not coupled to needing an AWS environment to even make progress. And then secondly, we have this whole serverless express thing. So we can't even like run this locally. Um, we'd have to actually extract the way the express service and have a different file to spin it up. But I'm not going to dive into that in this video. I think I just wanted to focus on getting the DynamoDB table set up and then adding the endpoints where we can actually hit it to verify it's working. I'm going to do one last deploy and then I'm going to test it on the deployed environment since it doesn't take too long to do. And there we go. It loaded in all the nodes. I'm getting a bunch of like errors still, but at, very, at the very least, you can see that it's loading up my nodes and I can like traverse them now. Showing up in the application. This is all coming from DynamoDB. Okay, all this data comes from the API. There are some bugs still with the application. As you see, every time I try to like dive into another node, it throws an error. So I'll have to go and like figure out how to run this locally so I can fix that. But overall, I mean, I think we're making some good progress. This is what we just added in right now. We added in a DynamoDB table. And I probably should have added this earlier on in the diagramming so we were kind of like on the same page. But this is going to read and write from DynamoDB, whatever data that you want. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what we did in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day and happy coding.